Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we know what a probability distribution is, we also can learn how to graph that distribution. And when we do so, we make what we call a probability histogram. Now there's two different kinds. Here's the most common type of histogram, but we can also have what we call a line histogram of the probability. So what does that look like and what is it? Well, again, let's go back to our probability distribution right here. We have x as being the variable, and again, we're using the example where we're tossing two coins. We're letting x equal the number of heads, and so the possibilities are that x equals 0, x equals 1, or x equals 2. That makes it a discrete random variable. And here are the associated probabilities of having 0 heads, 1 head, or 2 heads when we toss two coins one quarter probability that we'll have zero heads, two quarters or one half that we'll have one head, and one quarter probability that we'll have two heads. And so we can graph that in what we call a probability histogram. Notice here that the height corresponds to the probability. Here we have one quarter, one half or two quarters, and here we have the three possibilities for the variable x. It could be zero heads, one head or two heads. Now you can see that the greatest probability is that we have two head, uh, one head, that is one half probability. We have one quarter probability that will be zero heads and one quarter probability that will be two heads. Now notice zero doesn't have to be at the origin, so to speak, of our graph. Sometimes it's just better to move things over and to show on the horizontal axis zero, one, two to make it clear. It doesn't have to be right at the origin per se. And also notice that this gives us a visualization of the relative probability. You can see that this is twice as high as these two, so you can see that visually the probability of getting one head is twice as great as the probability to get zero heads or the probability to get two heads. Now sometimes we see something that looks like this, where we have vertical lines, and you can see again that the height of each line corresponds to the probability of the variable x, x being either zero heads, one head, or two heads. Now the advantage of using a line histogram versus the more common histogram where we use blocks like that is when there's a lot of, lot of variables or a lot of possibilities along the horizontal axis. Let's say there's 50 possibilities of the discrete variable. Instead of having 50 boxes, that would make the boxes really narrow, you can have just simple 50 lines. You still get that visualization of the probability distribution and you can do it much more cleanly. So this is the type you want to use if you have a lot of possibilities and this is the type you want to use when there's a limited number of possibilities. So again, it's sometimes just simply a choice. Either one works just, well, uh, just as well, but the probability histogram is one of the more common graphs you'll see when we're dealing with discrete random variables. And that is how it's done.